Hey guys, it's Girl Got Game. Welcome back to Magical Diary, where we are going to do Ellen's route. So we're starting over from the beginning, from the very top once more. Um, and yeah, we're gonna see what kind of personality Franco Franco develops in his uh, pursuit of Ellen. We were very Damien-like last time, and she is interested in Damien this time, so I don't know if we're gonna be very Damien-like again. But we'll see if we can avoid being schemey. I know she's not very impressed with flirty, interestingly enough. Um, but yeah, we're gonna try and be smart as much as we can. And I'm thinking for Ellen, I'm going to do... I'm trying to figure out like what spell, like what class of magic to really focus on this time with Ellen. I did blue last time. Um, I do need either push or teleport for later in her route. Um, so teleport's blue. I don't know when we get push as red. I want to save red for Barbara though because she's very red magic based. So, I might do a little bit of blue and then focus on either green, black, or white. I haven't quite decided. Maybe white. Although, no, I'm gonna save white for Damien. You know what, we're gonna do black with Ellen because that involves like looking deep into things, so we're gonna do that. All right, got that figured out. Should've figured that out before recording, but whatever. We're doing it on the fly here. <laughs> In Girl Got Gameville. Uh, anyway, so, hi, Grabby. Uh, I don't remember what I picked last time. Um, I feel like this is sporty. This is probably schemey, and this is laid back. Um, I want to try to be more sporty, because Ellen's into sports. So I, I might have picked this last time, but I'm going to pick it again, if that is the case. Hey, I like sports, you know. This is where I belong. I want to meet guys I get along with and have some fun. Isn't that the whole point of having halls? Perhaps so. He unlocks a door for me, then hands me the key. This will be your room. Your parents sent some of your belongings ahead. I walk ahead to see where I will be living. Alright, I'll skip ahead a little bit, because this is all... Um... So why did... Why did I come to school? Um, I'll learn better this way is what I did last time. You teach here is probably either schemey or flirty, and I want an easy ride as laid back, probably. Um, let's... <laughs> Should I do this? Mm. Mm. I'm probably gonna do this one when I do Luke's route. Luke's gonna be next after Ellen. I'm gonna be a very laid back, chill dude with Luke. So you know what? Let's do this for funsies and get into trouble. Iris Academy has a special feature that no other American school can offer. You are a professor here. My parents wanted me in the care of someone who understood our family responsibilities. Or so they told you. Oh, I was wondering. Do you have a list of the freshman class? Is there anyone I should be looking out for? Yeah, Grabby actually took that relatively well, so good job, Grabby. Alright, and our old boo. So... We did these two. Um... I think... I think we only got to do two of them. So I guess we'll start with the next one. What's the best color of magic? Whatever suits you best. Really, it's all about your personality and the way you like to solve problems. Maybe you like to hunt for the hidden weakness that unravels the puzzle. Or maybe you'd rather set puzzles on fire. You can get through your school year specializing in whatever you like. There is no wrong choice. So don't worry about making the best choice, okay? Find your own way. Alright. 
and tell me about Professor Potsdam. Tell me about Professor Potsdam. <laughs> if you haven't met her yet, I don't think I should spoil the surprise. She is unique. Powerful, though. Don't doubt that. She's in control of everything that happens at Iris Academy, and she always has a reason for what she does. Even if sometimes it seems... a little eccentric. Alright, well, we got a little further. Whatever else he was going to say is interrupted by a shriek of girlish outrage from the hall. Oh, excuse me a minute. He leaves the room and I duck out after him. There's our girl. Several people are standing in the hall. Two guys laughing. One plump blonde who looks like she'd rather be anywhere else and one wet, angry redhead. I'm guessing these may be the rest of the dancing family. William's brother and sister. V? Is that you? What happened? What happened was Donald and his new best friend. And a water balloon. You are such a dork. You're going to be in so much trouble. What are you going to do, Urchin? Tell Mom on me? She's not here. No, but I am. Come on, it was just a joke. Look at me! I'm soaked! Here, let me fix it. He holds out his hand and a gust of hot air blows through the corridor, evaporating away the droplets of water that clung to her hair. The other boy with Donald rubs a hand awkwardly through his hair. Sorry, okay? No harm done? Ugh, boys. Come on, Ellen, let's get out of here. Huh? Okay. You're coming, right, William? Actually, I'm supposed to be showing Franco around. Apparently, with William's hide in front of me, no one noticed I was there until now. Um... Hmm. I think I waved last time? I will greet everyone. Or should I look aloof? Nah, I'll greet everyone. I nod. It's nice to meet you. This is Franco Franco, Iris Academy's foreign exchange student. My brother Donald, my sister Virginia, and... Luke Pfeiffer. Ah, uh, Ellen Middleton, H Horse Hall. Which is where we should be going. William looks at me, but it's obvious that he'd rather go off with his sister and her friend. Go ahead, it's fine. Um, we'll do this this time. Because I think last time we skipped this and then we got a a different scene with Logan? Right? <laughs> so, uh, I'll do that probably next time around. For the sake of variety. I should talk to these guys anyway. We're all hallmates, right? Right. Luke. Luke, I'm so sorry. I don't know why I, like, forget your name. <laughs> you and your brother don't actually look any- like, you look alike, but not enough alike that I can't tell you apart. I just cannot- I wish you guys both didn't have L's for names. It, it's so hard to remember who's who. Alright, but don't forget, you can come talk to me anytime if you have questions. With a few more farewells, he and the girls leave us alone. The blue-haired boy, Luke, tries to lean against a doorframe, but misjudges the angle and stumbles backwards. Donald doesn't seem to notice. So, Franco, right? How come my big brother's shepherding you around like a lost goose? Teachers made him do it because he's class president. Oh, that. Do geese have shepherds? They have goose herds. It's in the fairy tales. He turns his gaze back to me. Foreign exchange student, right? Where are you from? Um, I will. I'll be truthful this time and not so vague. 
Illyria. I don't want to give away too many clues about my real identity, but if I make something up, I might forget it later. It's safer to stick close to the truth. Illyria. I've never heard of that. Most people haven't. I just shrug like it doesn't matter. So how come you're here at Iris Academy? I always wanted to see America. Yeah, we're cool, aren't we? Sure we are. If they made some special exchange arrangement with you, I'm guessing you were a born wizard, not a wild seed, right? Yeah, you. Wait, you must be if your brother and sister are here. I knew they were a magical family already, of course, but I wasn't sure if I was supposed to know, since it was something Professor Grabener told me. But I'm Wild Seed and my twin brother is here too. He's in Falcon Hall. Huh. Wild Seeds, magical kids born to non-magical parents, happen all over the world, but they're very rare. Two in the same family is pretty much impossible from what my parents told me. Oh well, it's not my business. Is your roommate here yet? Actually... I lead the guys into my room as I begin my half-hearted excuse again. They seem nice enough. Ordinary guys who like to have fun. I think this will work out. That's the hope and the dream. Alright, so... Um... Let's... I think we did sorry last time. Let's do... Mm, I, I'm probably going to do that when I'm <laughs> on Luke's route as well. Alright, you know what? We're doing unfashionably late. Hopefully that doesn't give us flirty points. Being fashionably late allows me to make a more dramatic entrance. Oh, I see! I am the only od audience you hope to notice you. How flattering! <laughs> she pats me on the shoulder. I'm sure Mr. Danson can fill you in on anything you've missed. Alright, is this... yeah, we're back. We back to it. And we have to do all... I don't think we can do those. I think we have to do... yeah. We are locked into doing one of each school so that we get at least some base spells to pass the first um, dungeon exam. So we can skip through this. Um, let's try louder. We did other languages last time, so we'll be like really obnoxious. Hello! I guess she heard me the first time. <laughs> Alright. And, um... I... I'm going to climb the tree, because that's a sporty thing to do. Even though we did that last time. Okay. So we're going to skip through this first week of spells. Um... What did I pick last time? I think I did it sounds dangerous. Um Ellen would probably think it's dangerous as well. I guess I'll do that again. Um I can't remember how, what Ellen thought of Virginia. Uh, I'll do she's annoying this time, why not? Your sister's a nag. Well, she is a horse. Hey, didn't shh. Huh? A nag. An old, broken down horse? Your English is so good, I forget it's not your first language. I haven't seen a lot of old horses on television. Guess I missed that one. Alright, I think we're back. Uh, hello? A windmill to tilt at? Oh, this is when he would have made the uh, joke about our English being so good. Never mind. 
Maybe he's the one whose English is strange. Perhaps, perhaps, mayhaps, even. Okay, so. Hello, Minnie. Good to see you. Um. Okay, I want to do she's cute. We'll leave that for Minnie's route. Uh, let's do too perky this early. <laughs> I'm not sure anyone should be that excitable first thing in the morning. It's not even that early. Well, it is the weekend. William smiles and gives his head a little shake. Alright, so now you're gonna give me all the details about money and stuff. And I'm gonna study again because we are going to be smart and impress Ellen, because Ellen's also studying today. Alright. Um, I feel like I've got a new option that wasn't here before. Uh, I'll, it'll be legend. Okay. <laughs> Power is always worth effort. Um, See, do I want to be the killjoy or more fun? I feel like you'd be giving yourself detention might be more of a Luke thing because he's very um I don't know if deliberate's the word I'm looking for. But like he takes everything at face value, <laughs> like what it is. Um, let's do it means you can have more fun this time. Well, it's a trade-off, right? You have to work for your merits, but that means you've got room to get in big trouble later. Like a get-out-of-jail-free card. We should have brought more board games from home. Ah, uh, okay, he liked that one. I'll, I'll have to remember that for his route, then. You can always fetch them at Christmas. Donald shrugs. Maybe I'll come up with a better plan later. I don't know. It's early days yet. Right, this has only been our first week, after all. Alright. When do we have lunch with Ellen? Is it now? This might be it. At midday, I head to the cafeteria for lunch. I carry my tray of food to an unoccupied table in, but just as I start to sit down, someone else sets a tray across from me. Oh! I'm sorry, I'll sit somewhere else. No, it's fine. There's plenty of room. Have a seat. This girl looks familiar. I think she's Donald's sister's friend or something. What was her name? Don't think you can go wrong by getting her name right. Ellen, right? Right. You're... Franco. You got it. Well, there's only one student from Europe here that I know of. Um, you should sit down and eat your lunch. You too. Right. I think I'm making her nervous, but I'm not sure why. I haven't done anything. Maybe she's naturally timid. Seems weird for a horse hall girl, though. Speaking of horse hall... So what sports do you play? Huh? I guess she wasn't expecting me to talk to her. Before I can apologize for interrupting her meal again, she beams at me. I like softball and volleyball. What's softball? It's like baseball, but the ball is... Soft? Not really, but it's bigger and softer than a regular baseball, and it doesn't go as fast. What about you? My favorite sport... Um, I don't know if it's gonna be too on the nose to say volleyball, so I'm gonna save. How far did we get in our will- man, we went pretty far. Alright. Um, volleyball? Volleyball, maybe? Okay. Let's try it. I like- <clears throat> My voice just broke. <coughs> I like you a lot! Okay, water, there we go. <clears throat> Come back to me, voice. I like volleyball, too. Too bad there's no team here. Yeah. 
I have no idea what to talk to this girl about. Maybe I should just eat my lunch and stop trying to be friendly. At least she kind of smiled. I'll take it. Hey, Ellen! Donald's sister slides in next to the other girl. I was just talking to Pastel, and she was saying how most of the wild season this year's class are girls again. Apparently it's been happening that way for a while, I don't know. So you see? You're part of the hot new trend. Uh, yeah. Are you gonna eat those? Without waiting for an answer, she starts stealing chips off her friend's plate. Hey. It's fine. I wasn't hungry. She never finishes her lunch. Don't talk with your mouth full! You're getting crumbs everywhere. I guess she's less timid when she's talking to other girls. I wonder if most wild seeds are female in general or if it's just at this school. You don't know? Shouldn't there be records somewhere? Probably, but you can't tell while they're still students. A lot of wild seeds drop out. Drop out? They're falling down. Drop out of school. They quit, they don't graduate, and then they aren't magical anymore. As if they'd never had the choice. A wild seed who chooses not to be magical anymore has air power and memories taken away, so that E can't betray the existence of magic to anyone else. I can't understand how anyone would choose to give up on magic. Lots of reasons. They get homesick, they miss TV, they don't like our rules, or they screw up in class too much and flunk out. Ellen will never have that problem. She's a huge nerd. Mm. She didn't even want to go to the mall yesterday. She wanted to stay home and study. Can you believe it? Actually, so did I. Really? Sure. It's important to get off to a good start. Right. Ugh, oh, boring, boring, boring. She grabs the last chip from Ellen's plate and stands. I'm gonna go for a walk. See ya! Huh. Ellen sighs quietly as Virginia exits. Sorry. What are you sorry for? Um, nothing, I guess? Have a good day. She takes her tray and exits. I feel like that went rather well, all things considered. Alright, let's look at our diary. Um, let's see. That's the same, I think. Alright, this is gonna be a bit different. William Danson came by to give me a basic introduction to the school, but we were interrupted by his siblings, Virginia and Donald, who apparently don't get along. After William and Virginia left, I talked to Donald and his roommate Luke a bit, and told them I was from Illyria. Luke says he and his brother are both wild seeds, which I thought was impossible. America is a strange place. Um, okay, so we did that. Did that. Um, that one too. Okay. That. That. Um, uh, that. <laughs> Sister came and yelled at him. Um, met Minnie. Donald's infamy. And there we go, lunch encounter. I had lunch with a couple of girls from Horse Hall, Ellen and Virginia. They mentioned that some wild seeds choose to give up their magic and memories to go back to the mundane world. Apparently, there are more female wild seeds at Iris Academy than male. Alright. Um, should I... I guess I'll... Um... Whoops. Ugh, man. This... I don't really like the system very much. Okay, breeze. One. Okay, light. Two. Okay, diagnosis. Three. I just gotta get used to this. Perfect. Now we got some spells in our quick slot. <laughs> and now I can focus on black. Well, I got breeze, right? I didn't get push. Might need to do a little bit of red to get push. Cause I can't, well, teleport's handy though. 
Maybe I should do blue so I don't spoil myself for red. Someone's knocking at my door. What's going on? It's too early for classes. Hey, mind if I come in? Oh, right. I'd forgotten he said he was going to drop by. Thank you. In a little while before classes start for the week, there's going to be an assembly for all the freshmen and the seniors. Not like last week. Okay, this is just about initiation. We can skip this. Um... I guess we will look forward to it. I don't want to say I don't want special treatment. Uh, just in case that locks us out of initiation. Because I do want to go to the party and see Ellen there. So I guess we will we'll go through with it this time. When will I not, though? You know what? I'm going to save. Maybe William will be Ellen's uh, senior, and then she won't fall in love with Damien. Initiation. All right. I don't want special treatment. It's not up to you. Freshmen don't get to choose. So if you want to be treated like everyone else, you'll have to abide by a senior's decision. Come on. Since I'm managing the initiation, I need to be there early. I can show you where to go. Oh, okay. We're just doing it anyway. Alright. Oh, okay, we gotta go back. Alright, so... I turned to ask William about it, but he's staring in the direction of a different group of freshmen. A worried expression on his face. Following his gaze, I spot Ellen, picking herself up off the floor with the assistance of someone who must be her new senior. My rival yet again! A very distinctive-looking character from Falcon Hall. His skin is as blue as a diva's, but those are not the feathered wings of a Drangoni warrior. They give him the aspect of a devil. Clearly, he is of otherworldly origin, but beyond that, I do not recognize the exact type. It takes only a moment to find his entry in the handbook. Damien Ramsey. Not a name that gives me any clue. Who's ever heard of a Ramsey? But then, who's ever heard of a Franco Franco? The names only tell you as much as someone wants them to. Shaking my head, I look back at William. Everything okay? Hmm. I'm not sure. I've got to keep an eye on things in here for a while, make sure everyone's got a partner that needs one, and so on. You should probably get on with your class schedule for the week. So what do I have to do next for initiation? Okay, I think we can safely do that. Um, let's do a smart and a... What's our sleep like? Okay. Blue, black. Oh, actually, this is the September 9th to 13th. We need to do um, a Grabner class on the 12th, I think, is when the love letter thing happens. This is the 10th. This is the 11th. Okay. 9, 10. Yeah, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so that was going to work out anyway. 9, 10, 11, 12. Yes? No? Yes. Okay. We want to be there for that whole sordid affair, so let's go! I don't know how much blue I need for teleport, but we're gonna try. And this lovely... M. <laughs> blaze. Lovely Blaze. Okay. Um, I will just do what I did last time. Um, but on Barbara's route, I'm going to be <laughs> more confrontational about Lady Angela. Um, I could change my choice here, though. Um, let's try this one. 
All mornings are good. Actually, I love mornings. I like having an early start and a good breakfast. Ugh. Alright. And then she... Uh, I knelt down, so I'll bend over this time. I bend over to pick up the pencil. Yeah, I knew that was gonna happen. Don't show your back to me! Seriously? Alright. <laughs> Hi, Big Steve. <laughs> um... <laughs> Uh, I'll do that again. That's fine. And, um, I will do his list. Because I want to make sure he gives us the, um... The assignment later to <laughs> distract Ellen or Damien. Alright, fulfill the list. Minnie's gonna help me do this, so we can skip through that. Okay, this is different. As class gets underway, I notice that Luke in a nearby seat keeps shifting his weight back and forth. He twitches and flattens his hands against his desk and takes a sharp breath. And then a little later, he does it again. Does he have to go to the toilet or something? If he's not careful, he's going to fall out of his chair. Finally, he gets up. And then steps onto his chair and stands there. Ah, yay, the, um, Alice in Wonderland poem about the, um, the Bandersnatch. Um, not the Bandersnatch. Uh, I'll miss you where the burrow grows, the morass that grabs. Man, I can't remember the, the dragon's name. Man, my brain is just broken. Anyway, Luke, please continue with your poem. Twas brillig and the slithy toves that gyre and gimble in the wade. Master Pfeiffer? Oh, Mimsy, where the borogoves and the momraths outgrave. Master Pfeiffer, that will be enough, thank you. You fulfilled your task. Here, let me help you down. Luke looks confused and takes the professor's hand to hop to the ground and sit back in his seat. My dear starlings, Seniors do not override professors, and initiation does not override school rules. If someone orders you to do something in class, ignore them. The excuse of initiation will not get you out of being punished. So I get detention now? Oh no! I love that poem! You'll just have to finish reciting it for me after class. I failed! I can't fail! I'm me. Someone knocks on my door. Is this going to be another senior? This is probably Barbara. Uh, I won't open it. If I pretend I'm not here, maybe they'll go away. I wait for a while. The knocking repeats once and then falls silent. Whoever it was must have given up. Yeah, I think that was Barbara. I'll leave that for later. There's a few options with that, but I'll leave that for another time. Okay, I think this is the love letter incident. When Professor Grabner arrives for class, we're all waiting quietly in our seats. He proceeds to walk to the front of the class, looks down at his desk, and frowns. He picks up a folded piece of pink paper and glares at it as if it had been a cockroach in his pudding. Unfolding it gingerly, he begins to read aloud. Let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments. Love is not love which alters when it alteration finds. Wait, isn't that Shakespeare? Why is he quoting Shakes? Did someone write him a love letter? How profoundly unoriginal. There are a few giggles quickly smothered as his gaze sweeps the classroom. Would the author of this little missive care to identify him or herself? Considering his reputation, who would write a love letter to Hieronymus Grabener? That raven girl, maybe. 
To my surprise, it's that blonde girl who stands up. It's mine, sir. Ah, Miss Middleton. And do you expect me to be flattered by your childish affections? My what? But it's not... Ten demerits and detention this Saturday. I can explain! For initiation... I am not interested in your excuses! Ouch. Her bad luck that Grabiner takes disruption to his classes less well than Possum does. In the interest of avoiding further disruption to today's lessons, I think it best that you leave the classroom now. Perhaps by tomorrow you will have had time to think about your actions. Her face crumples damply and she leaves the room. I'm not sure that was fair. But I succeeded in my quest for blue magic. Despite it all. I finally learned something there. Black magic is not my forte, apparently. Okay, this is the end. So I'll just fast forward until we get to Virginia. There they are. I can't see Donald anywhere at the moment, but... Instead, I nearly run into Virginia, who is clinging to her roommate's hand and eyeing the nearby seniors with great suspicion. So he's, uh, with you? Virginia, this is Damien. Damien, my roommate, Virginia. William's sister. That's right. Um... And I assume you two already know each other? Baltazar. Damien. Good week. It's all right. Baltazar here was just telling me all about his begonias. Why don't you two talk about that while... Oh, hi, Franco. Hello. Why don't you boys stay and talk while Ellen and I go get some food? But... You know how much I love dessert. With an apologetic backwards glance, Ellen allows herself to be dragged away, leaving me with two seniors I've never even met. However, the Toad Senior doesn't seem at all bothered by his changing audience. Alright, and uh, on that note, we're gonna skip ahead and you guys take me to the mall, which is great. Um... Do I need to go anywhere in particular? Not today, okay. Um, I, d I can't afford anything at the magic shop right now. I could get glasses, though. Maybe. Gotta go to the magic shop. No, that's dark glasses. Where's the... Is it just dark glasses? No, go back. Enchantments? Regular glasses. Yeah, let's uh, let's look really nice with some glasses. We'll put that on later. And how much are the charms again? Thirty dollars. Okay. Good to know. Hi. How are your studies? Um. Well, we're supposed to be smart, so we're going- it's going great, man. Don't even worry about it. Uh, yeah, let's do this and see what happens. You were unfair to Ellen. Well, I think you were unfair to that girl with the love letter. You shouldn't have punished her like you did. She's a freshman and a wild seed. Of course she'd do whatever her senior ordered. The school told her to obey. Why would she know better? That situation has been dealt with. It was a misunderstanding in this particular circumstance. Miss Middleton's case aside, it is a common initiation prank for a freshman to be made to proclaim their love for me. The very thought of which fills them with horror and dismay. They think this is funny. It can't be very pleasant for him to think that people are being tortured by the idea of pretending to like him. I love you, Grabby. 
I will not be used as an instrument of comedy. The freshmen don't know what's a common prank. They haven't had the chance to learn. Next year's freshmen won't know anything about what punishment you might have given out this year. If you want to punish someone, punish the seniors. They're the ones who should know better. His breath hisses through his teeth. You overstep yourself. Well, for an ordinary student, maybe. But you invited me to tea. That means society rules apply. Oh, dang. Franco Franco pulling rank here. And my family name obviously outranks his. And he knows it. Yes. Give my compliments to your parents when next you contact them. I thought you were contacting them. Do you think they would entrust their only son's welfare entirely to me without verification? Okay, I think we're back. <laughs> well, that went quite a bit differently. Um, ba 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 ba. Okay, nothing but Ellen there. We did that one already. Um, okay, we did that too. We did that. Okay, poetry. Okay, we didn't read this yet. Luke tried to recite a poem during one of Professor Potsdam's classes as part of an initiation challenge. Potsdam says that initiation is no excuse for misbehaving in class, so he had to stay afterwards to recite it for her. And uninvited guest? Someone knocked on my door. I suspect it might have been a senior hoping to assign me more tasks. I decided not to answer. Unlucky love letter. Apparently, Ellen was asked to write a love letter to Professor Grabener as part of an initiation task. He did not appreciate it and gave her demerits and attention. Freshman initiation ended with a party by a lake. William gave me a leather bracelet as a memorial of the experience. I tried to talk to Ellen and Virginia, but they escaped and left me with their seniors, Damien and Balthazar. Both very strange people in different ways. Tea with the professor. Grabener invited me to his rooms for tea and to discuss my schooling and my thoughts about initiation. We had a small disagreement about who really ought to be punished for initiation pranks. I thought he would be reporting everything I did to my parents, but he emphasized that I should be writing to them as well. It's a good thing I have these notes to draw on. Alright, I think that's that. And then... Oh yeah! Looking very snexy. Love it. Alright, things are going good. <laughs>